something else that I really wanted to talk to you about is Diaz and McGregor. Obviously, we didn't know what was going to happen. Everyone was, you know, up. It was crazy trying to find out who who was going to replace Dos Anjos. What did you think of uh, Dos Anjos pulling out? I mean, obviously, you know, Connor says it was a bruised foot, but I mean, I saw the picture. It, it looked nasty. Yeah, there's no doubt it was a serious injury. Uh, the, the question would more be how is he getting an injury this close to a massive fight? I mean, that'd be my question. And, and I feel the same frustration as, as the fans do. I wanted to see that fight. And I mean, John and I, we're, we've already recorded inside the Octagon for it. You know what I mean? We've already invested three days in the fight. And it, it, it's, it's a good breakdown. I felt, I felt confident about the show. So that's disappointing from a selfish perspective. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about that breakdown? Um, yeah, I'm still trying to push the UFC to put it out because people are still asking to watch it. People are still very interested. Um, the, the reality is that you know Dos Anjos is, I mean, he's a southpaw. He's, he's a he's a striker very similar to, to Aldo. Without the finesse, he's got much more of a of a power based style. He's much more aggressive. Um, he, he's very good at finding his range early on in the fight and putting pressure on people. And then if you look at how he shut down uh, uh, Anthony Pettis. I, I would expect the same game plan for him against McGregor. You know, McGregor's style relies on having space around him, and if he doesn't have that space, we don't know how he reacts because no one's ever been able to put that kind of pressure on him. I mean, in the first round of the Chad Mendes fight, obviously he got taken down a couple of times, he had his guard passed. But I watched that fight and I think to myself, well, he knew Chad Mendes was taken out on short notice, so he could have just kind of burnt that first round to get him out of there and get him into the second to, you know, start working those energy systems and stuff. So. I, I just don't know. I, I think that uh, I think RDA would have been a really good challenge for him. You know, the other thing that we talked about in, in the build-up to the Aldo fight is that Aldo's low kick is dangerous for anybody. But given the fact that Conor McGregor stands southpaw, it, it kind of undoes that technique for him a little bit. Aldo would have to work to the inside leg, which then exposes him to the straight left, which obviously is Conor's big weapon. Whereas with RDA being orthodox, it's being southpaw, and if you watch his fight against Nate Diaz, who's also another southpaw, he hammered that front leg to pieces. I mean, Nate Diaz could barely stand up on it. And I just think that, that a person that is going to expose Conor on the feet has to work that front leg. Because a lot of, a lot of uh, McGregor's game is, is based around that leg, that front leg. If you take away the power or the strength of it, it's going to affect his whole game. Um, and for me, that was really RDA's focus in the fight, would be take away that base. So is this still a fight that you'd like to see? And perhaps we will see, because obviously Connor wants the, the lightweight belt. So. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's going to be a fight we're going to see. The only, the only way it doesn't happen is if Nate Diaz wins. Mm. And obviously Nate Diaz would love for that to happen. He wants to, to completely ruin Conor McGregor's party. And there's no better way of doing that than taking that lightweight title shot away from him. And the truth is, if he loses to, to Nate Diaz, no matter what weight it's at, I don't think there's an argument there for him stepping straight down to lightweight into a title shot. I, I mean, my argument was that I, I would have liked to have seen him step into lightweight and fight a couple of contenders first. I think it only kind of makes sense, but Conor's got that star power. Um, he's got that belief behind him, not only in himself, but in the people that surround him and obviously in the UFC as well, that they can put him into these big fights and he can perform. Um, and, you know, he's stepping up again to fight a guy like Nick Diaz and the UFC are confident he, they, he can perform. And obviously Conor is as well, otherwise he wouldn't be taking a fight at welterweight. On yeah, I was going to say, what do you think about him going up two weight classes? Uh, I, I, I mean... Uh, I'm, I'm less concerned about him going up to welterweight and more concerned about him going back down to featherweight because I just don't think he makes featherweight anymore now. Um, I think he's grown into the, into the lightweight weight class too quickly and I think his body's been waiting to do it since, you know, since he, he moved down to featherweight. He's, he's always looked kind of gaunt on the scales. He's always looked a bit, a bit drawn. So I think that you know, it, it was only a matter of time putting it off moving up to lightweight and I think now he's allowed his body to gain those extra couple of pounds they're not going to come off. Uh, and I think, I think ultimately he's going to have to vacate that belt, which then obviously if he wants to be a two-weight champion, he's got to start thinking about Robbie Lawler. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think we could, obviously if he wins against Diaz, do you think we might see that at UFC 200? It, it's possible. It, it's possible. I mean, if, if he beats Diaz, then I think, uh, I think that moving back down to lightweight to fight for the title is, is the thing that makes sense. Um, if RDA is not ready, then he's got to think about his featherweight belt because... Uh, Frankie Edgar's there waiting for him um, and if not then that belt needs to be vacated so it can be fought for and, and, and utilised but moving up to welterweight you know is a different kettle of fish altogether it's one thing stepping on the scales at 170 but it's another thing to be to be hanging with 170 pounders you know 
Like, I mean, if, if you look, like Nate Diaz is not a small guy. He's, he's tall, he's rangy, he's lanky. He doesn't have the, he doesn't have the bulk to fill himself out at, at welterweight. But he can certainly step into that weight class, just as, you know, people like Cowboy can and Ben Henderson. But when you talk about kind of stepping up and fighting someone like Roy McDonald or Carlos Condit or Thiago Alves even, you know, someone that is that has the frame to compete with, with McGregor, that's not going to be undersized and, and outpunched by his reach, but has also got, you know, extra pounds of solid muscle on their frame that they can utilize and have been utilizing over, you know, most of their career. It's a different kettle of fish, you know, it really is. Uh, until McGregor's up above 200 pounds, he's always going to be an undersized welterweight. And I just don't think he carries that weight any higher up. So if that ever did happen, uh, how do you think that would pan out? Personally, I think I think welterweight be, be a step too far for him right now. Um, I, I think I think his time at featherweight is done. I think now is the and now is his phase at, at the lightweight division. I think he can have probably five or six good fights at lightweight. Uh, he can either he can either defend the belt and hold it, or, or he can or he can chase after it and win it and defend it a couple of times and step away. But the other thing as well is, you know, he's young, you know, he's, he's not 30 yet. So, and I, and I can speak from experience, when you hit that age, if you continue training the same way as you already have, you always have, and your body will continue to want to grow, it will grow into a welterweight weight class. I mean, he's, he's not going to grow in height. He's always going to be going to be slightly short for the weight class, but he can certainly carry the, carry the muscle and the bulk. Um, but then the question is, does that, does that change his fighting style at all? Does that take away some speed that he's got that, that adds to his power? So, I mean... It's so exciting when people move up and down weight classes. I like to see it. I like to see people moving around. I heard a rumor Rockhold wants to move up to heavyweight at some point. You know, that's, you know, I mean, that's exciting. You know, imagine he's, he's got the size and the stature for it, as has John Jones. So we have, this, we have the space in the sport now to start having these super fights, you know, between, between guys that are just exciting to watch. You know, it doesn't really matter what weight they're fighting at. It they, they agree at a weight. And, and they just they just fight, and the fans get exactly what they want. And I think that this McGregor Diaz fight is exactly that. So, do you think we will see him as a two division champion? Two weight. Um, my personal opinion is that if he if he's if they're going to call him a two weight champion, he has to defend the featherweight belt at least once. I I just. I, I feel I feel almost like it's a little wasteful to say he's the two weight champion if he never returns to featherweight because at some point in the near future we're going to have a two weight champion and I mean the most likely person obviously is John Jones you know if if he comes back runs through Daniel Cormier and defends his belt one at a time and steps up to, to heavyweight he could hang with those guys the, the only person that, that competes with him for reach is Stefan Struve who's seven foot tall so you know it, just a build alone of John Jones can carry him into heavyweight. And that's a, that's a realistic situation where he can step into heavyweight at 225, he can win the belt, defend it, he can come back down to uh, light heavyweight, defend that belt, go back. Whereas, I mean, and, and if, for, for, um, uh, for John Jones, he's going from the weight that he walks around at to the weight he competes at and back and forth. Whereas Connor's going from a weight he competes at to another weight he competes at, which are both taxing on his body. It's just you're a different animal when you're when you're smaller. You know the percentage of weight that you're losing to make the weight is a higher percentage of your body weight, which makes it more difficult. So, um, for me to consider him a two weight champion, he has to he has to defend the featherweight featherweight belt at least once. Yeah.